Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is a November garden tour here in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Uh, we've only had a couple minor frost and they really didn't get down to the ground and so it didn't uh, it didn't really knock things back all that much. But this coming week, uh, right here in the middle of November, we're finally getting two freezes. So a lot of the things that you'll see uh, flowering in this video will be will be will pass by. I think there's three nights in a row in the low 30s, two of them below freezing. So finally going to put the garden to sleep, which I actually like. I prefer to get the garden to sleep in a slow and steady way. Uh, I don't want to go much longer into the winter and then get a real, real deep, hard cold snap. That was always the problem in the nursery business is things needed to things need to go to sleep slowly and then once they're asleep uh they're less vulnerable to winter damage um, but right now the all these things are very vulnerable but going 33 31 29 that kind of thing um we'll get them to sleep and without hurting them so lots of things uh still blooming the mexican uh, sage has just been uh, just been outstanding of course we've got it propped up here uh and it's you know, three and a half, four feet tall, I guess over four feet tall actually, right here at the peak. Uh, it's cold this morning. This is the first uh, morning. <laughs> We've been in mornings in the 50s and 60s <laughs> for a while now, which should have been our, you know, slightly below our daytime highs. Uh, so the bees are out here every afternoon. We've still got lots of celosia flowering. Uh, we have zinnias flowering. We have marigolds flowering. Uh, what else in the annual? Um, annuals and perennials. There's a lot of lantana blooming. There's several other salvias uh, blooming, uh, including uh, uh, one, one over here by the path. It's just out, you know, un unbelievable. So a lot of really summertime things are still in flower out here. We've put up a couple videos planting uh, pansies, uh, some annuals out here, making the annual beds uh, slightly bigger or improving them, uh, if you've watched those. And uh, the pansies are doing okay. We were out of town for about a week and a half. The rabbits have nibbled on a flower here and there for sure. Uh, all they're they're helping us. They're helping prune them uh, back so they'll be bigger, better, fuller in the spring. Uh, this Ms. America mustard that we we've planted several out here. Uh, Steph put out here in this annual border. They have just j hit the ground running. Uh, this is a great. This is a beautiful. Uh, for those of us in the south, we can grow these kinds of greens. Uh, through the winter time and uh, again this one's called Ms. America if you can find it uh, probably look great in a container all winter as well pansies are there snapdragons are there uh, we've got a lot of bulbs that are going into places where we have spaces for bulbs the uh, Gerber daisy is still uh, still flowering here almost the middle of uh, almost the middle of November and all the abelia have just been standouts the fall is one of the best times of years for abelia to be blooming. So we have the variegated abelias out here, the radiance and um, uh, Miss Lemon in the back uh, garden. And then we have one over here on the corner of the property. It's an upright green foliage one uh, that's still in absolute full bloom. Again, it's going to get knocked back this week, but the bees have had a lot of options uh, very late in the season this year. Our dwarf conifers, although still small in the landscape because we bought small containers when we planted them, are really starting to show off. This is the time of year they put on lots of new growth. You can see this green penguin pine uh, at the front gate here is just covered in new growth, uh, which is pretty typical for uh, conifers here uh, this time of year. And they'll do it in early spring as well. We've got, we brought back some conifers from, uh, from Mr. Maple. We put up a video this past week or maybe a week and a half ago with their, uh, with 10 conifers from their place. We brought back a few and we brought back some other things too. You guys will see in videos, but more dwarf conifers going into the, uh, to the landscape. The uh, Caryopteris continues to be a standout. I mean, my goodness, uh, this thing, this first choice Caryopteris has just put on a never ending show out here by the street. And it's just in the perfect spot. Sometimes you get lucky. Uh, it, the flowers are right up above that fence. Uh, and so it shows off on both sides of the fence uh, and still allows you to plant things uh, on the other side of it. Uh, Holly, of course, is out here showing off as well. Um, the camellias are really starting to uh, really starting to show off. This is uh, white shishi, which is you know has double white double white flowers. The occasional spot of pink I've noticed uh, in them. You know the occasional the occasional one. Um, we have, I don't know if I've got one fully open. Well, these are absolutely perfect full white doubles on a dwarf uh, camellia sasanqua. This one. This one is rather slow growing, so you know some nurserymen have, uh, 
you know, it's probably not got a lot of availability just because it takes a season or two longer to grow this plant in a container. So if two things, if you're having trouble finding it, that's why. And if you do find it and it's a few dollars more, that's why. Um, but once it's in your landscape like this, it's great to have a plant that only grows a few inches a year, right? Because I don't have to do anything to it. Um, and then it shows up blooming. What will happen this week is uh, we've got open flowers on it. We'll get this cold. Uh, which is cold enough to hurt the open flowers but the flower the plant's smart enough to keep the rest of the flower buds closed and so on the other side of the cold weather uh, they'll start to open back up again we've got a light pink shishi over here i think it's only open one flower so far uh, but it's got it's got flower buds on it so uh, we'll see these over the course of november december uh, flowering one other thing that's over this way um, and again there's Actually, a lot of things going on right now. Conifers looking great. Uh, the, uh, the gold pineapple sage, which is just completely hidden back here, is in full flower. And of course, every, every pollinator uh, loves this thing uh, during the day. The bees have to cheat. These are way too long for the bees. So they just go back in here and drill a hole in the back of it uh, to, uh, to cheat the system. But the gold pineapple sage looks great. There's a cestrum. The cestrum is still blooming, so I haven't you know, it's actually leaning on an azalea over here and I need to get it fixed because we've had a couple hurricanes uh, or tropical storms by the time they were here, uh, bend this thing over. It's gonna get killed back to the ground this winter in all likelihood and I'll just cut it back to the ground. So I'm not overly concerned about it, but it is still flowering here in the middle of November. Sliding around to the uh, back garden space, there's again, still so many things, you know, going off right now, you know, this late into November. This uh. One thing that should be, and is right on time, is this Bella Rouge Camellia. This is a Camellia Sasanqua from the Southern Living Plant Collection. Great uh, pinkish red flower, really deep, uh, dark uh, pink that uh, I guess some people would probably describe as red or, again, extremely dark pink. But you see the growth habit of Bella Rouge is just kind of flat, uh, dwarf habit. Uh, thing looks great. Hasn't been pruned at all. Fantastic plant. It's got a calla lily on the back side of it that's being a bit of a bully and is blooming, uh, blooming and putting on lots of new growth here uh, in November. It's going to have to be uh, part of this plant will have to be dug up and divided and uh, probably just given away. We'll probably just put it right back in the spot. It's, it's perfectly happy, but it needs some control added to it uh, at this point because it's, 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 it's on a gardenia on one side and on a, uh, a camellia on the other. Both of these are dwarfs. These are in the perfect spots, uh, but that calla lily's growing quickly. The garden plants with Jim Putnam channel, if you're not subscribed over there, um, we're trying to create kind of an, an almost an encyclopedia uh, of plants on another channel and everything's gonna go in playlist. Uh, uh, lots and lots of playlists. So each plant will be in a playlist. Let's say it's Hardy in zone six and it's a shade plant. There's going to be a zone six shade plant playlist, zone seven shade plant playlist, so on and so forth. And so uh, if you're looking for something in particular, there's the, the playlists are developing for that type of thing. If you if you know, if you're looking for possibly something like a native plant for zone five, something like that, that's native to North America, uh, the, those playlists are in the pro we're in the process of developing those they'll only have like two or three videos in each playlist right now uh but they are coming so if you want to uh, please go over there and subscribe to that channel if you would this uh orange flowering osmanthus uh this clara uh, the juliet clara the chinese snowball viburnum which is still blooming right here these are recent additions actually the clara hasn't gone up quite yet um, when you see this but um, lots of the plants in this garden have gone up on that channel and we're shooting them at other nurseries and other places in the process of editing them and uh, getting those videos up on that channel. I pointed out the orange flowering Osmanthus down at the other end. This is the regular Osmanthus fragrance. These are about eight feet tall uh, at this point and are creating a great screen between us and the neighbor over here. And they're also in full flower. And Osmanthus are so interesting in the fall and winter and early spring because they were in absolute full bloom and then we got a couple frost a minor frost and these were up tall enough that they got some of that impact of that frost so it slowed them down and then of course we went right back to 50 degree nights and uh 75 degree days and here we are again in full flower and this week we'll uh, slow them down again and they may they may just completely stop blooming once it 
gets cold and kind of stays cold until late winter, uh, you know, sometime in February, likely, uh, they'll do this again. And it's just a, it's just such a great scent uh, in the garden and such an interesting pattern, you know, where it just, it needs those, it's that sweet spot uh, where it's somewhere in between hot and cold uh, that they flower like this. Here's a couple interesting Southern Living Plant Collection plants. Uh, this is an aloe called Safari Sunrise. And we actually have this as a house plant here in Raleigh, but we bring it outside in the fall in those cool, slightly cool nights, not freezing. We won't leave it out here on a, on a, on a night that's gonna be below freezing, but uh, getting those cool nights on it stimulates the flowers. You can see all these flower spikes. So we'll bring it back in as it's getting colder uh, this week. But uh, these flowers open up orange, uh, which are, you know, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. Uh, and uh, again, the way I get my aloe to bloom is just bring it out in the fall. There's a Dianella in the container next to it called Clarity Blue. It has this bluish hue to it. This is another one that's not really quite hardy here. It had no problem last winter because we just had a very mild winter. And as long as we're getting, you know, I'm not gonna worry about 31 on this, um, but I would worry about something on it like lower than 20. So we'll protect it if we need to, uh, lower than 20. Um, but it's a zone eight uh, perennial um, grass, you know, grass-like plant uh, with that blue foliage. We got a huge load of wood chips earlier this uh, year. When you get, when you go on the chip drop website, it usually, it says, uh, you know, you put down your name, you tell them, you know, you can, re you know, you're willing to take it whenever. And then that person will call you or text you or whatever and say that they're going to be there in like 20 minutes or whatever. But it, on the website, it says, you know, up to 20 yards or something like that. The truck that came here in the spring when I ordered wood chips uh, was probably 25 to 30 yards of wood chips. And this is such a, this is a very small lot and we are already pretty much landscaped it. The only thing I wanted the wood chips for was I, we like to put them in the middle of our rows in the vegetable garden because it's just making compost and it's something we can walk on that's soft in the vegetable garden. These paths back here are wood chips and I'm just um, still using the wood chips from that pile that's on the drive, at the top of the driveway here. Uh, Still, you know, so we did the paths once and I'm in the process of redoing them and we're finally going to used up this wood chips. Gave wood chips away to friends in the neighborhood. We've been, we, we've been drowning in wood chips <laughs> since I got that load. So I don't think we need any uh, for a while, but they are just fantastic here in the garden. I, I actually have really liked having the wood chips in the path here. It's soft on Holly's feet. It's soft on our feet. It raises the paths a bit. And so typically, you know, when you're walking on paths all the time, you're sinking them. And so your, your rainwater's coming down and it's going into the paths, right? So by raising them up like this, the water is going where it needs to be. Plus I'm making compost in the garden. The plants can root right under it, or I could actually dig the compost out and throw it in the beds later um, before I mulch um, over the top of that if I wanted to and re-do uh, wood chips. So anyway, um, finally getting rid of this pile of wood chips. The fall vegetable garden is absolute peak. Uh, it looks, uh, I think this is one of the best uh, fall gardens we've had in this space so far. Um, I think uh, Steph did a great job of laying everything out in blocks so that we have colorful little blocks, uh, colorful little rows. Uh, the broccoli is forming. Uh, we have, look at this kohlrabi. I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and pull one of these just so you guys can see it. Uh, this is coal, this is the kohlrabi. You can see we're, she was in here picking lettuce, picking lettuce yesterday. But that's kohlrabi. This one's a, probably a little small, but uh, this is actually quite tasty. Roasted, um, sliced, roasted in the oven. That's typically typically how we how we eat it. Uh, it's you know it's like a it's like a it's like a root vegetable that's not a root. It's somehow above the ground, um, you know, like that, which is. It's just kind of fun to grow. It looks like an alien, uh, an alien vegetable out here. We actually have carrots that we think we're going to get great carrots from this year. Uh, again, kale and uh, lots of lettuces and uh, beet. We have beets. Anything else I'm missing? Oh, the um, tons and tons and tons of peas. Uh, peas are. I think we almost have we almost have peas ready to pick uh, at this point and uh, tons of pollinators out here working the peas. They're growing on both ends. So vegetable garden looks great. And what she did, again, uh, these are planted in blocks and wood chips are in the paths 
uh, in here. So we're building soil, building compost, even you know during during the uh, growing season here. It's going to be 31 this week and uh, a couple nights, and so we'll we'll put a shade protection blanket over this. Again, this broccoli is about this big at this point. I've got probably two or three more weeks of sun on them in order to really finish those uh finish those off and i'd like to get that so again we'll we'll cover it a couple nights this week look at this marvel mahonia right now uh, last year we had one flower spike on it because we had one stem basically uh each of each stem on this plant uh will finish it will terminate with one of these flower clusters and so last year this was, this was a single stem shrub so after it finished flowering, well, late winter, um, I just cut that stem in half uh, way down low here. And then five or six stems have come up on it this year. And uh, you can see each of those has a flower cluster on it. Uh, after this winter and early spring, we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna bring it down to about this height again. Each of those will branch and next year there'll be even more flowers. This is another one that the bees are just absolutely all over uh, every afternoon. Uh, it's still, you know, kind of an up, super upright, narrow uh, version of a, a Marvel Mahoney. And this is kind of how they grow, uh, but I probably want it a little bit wider than it is. So again, I'm going to cut it one more time. Uh, and then again, so uh, I don't know how many flower spikes we have this year. We'll have at least double that uh, next year. But what a, I mean, you, you're, you're not seeing this fully yet. These will end up this big. These individual flowers have not really started to open yet, but you can already see the color on it. All right, one other thing that's doing the same thing as the uh, Mahonia, uh, as the Marvel Mahonia over there is this uh, Farfugium or tractor seat plant. You see why they call it a tractor seat plant. We have several varieties of these and two more uh, just went in the ground uh, in a video not that long ago. So uh, lots of Farfugium and this back line back here, they've been perfect in this dry shade. Uh, so, you know, they normally I think they're, you see moist, well-drained soil. They've had no problem at all back here in really dry conditions. Dry conditions that that Bruner hasn't liked and Hosta hasn't liked. Um, uh, hellebores and cast iron plants have done well back here. You know, we, we're finding the things that don't mind this sandier, dry, shady space back here. Farfugium's definitely at the top of that list. These flowers are about to open. This is completely normal for them to be flowering October, November, uh, even into early December. Farfugium, you know, some people still call Ligularia. It used to be in the genus Ligularia and uh, it got separated. The Farfugium are definitely less cold hardy uh, overall. So, uh, you know, this is more of a Southern, uh, the Farfugium are more of Southern plants, but those of you watching, you know, Ligularia, um, almost everybody can grow. So we always do these tour videos and show you everything that's looking great. Well, of course, there's always things out here that don't look great. The dahlias are in the process of going uh, to sleep and this just looks like a pile of mess. Uh, over here at this point. Uh, so kind of ready to get a freeze on these, get them knocked back to the ground. We're in the area where we can dig up our dahlias and store them or not. Uh, so some will come back and pro some probably won't. Uh, one thing we do though is here, here's a seed head uh, from this year. We go through here and we collect these seeds. There are, you know, probably close to without exaggerating 50 to there's between 50 and 100 seeds in one of these individual uh, pieces here and um, they just have this little paper covering on them they germinate readily so once they let them dry on the stem out here completely dry uh, and then you can store them we store them in a little glass jar and get 80 to 90 percent germination on them in the spring these are all now kind of hybridized you know because the bees have been mixing them up so we kind of don't know what we're going to get from these seeds but it's kind of fun um, kind of fun i can throw these on the ground because we have lots and lots more uh, more than we'd ever need uh, to pick this is our the other thing about getting these things knocked back to the ground the edge of this has strawberries and rosemary and sage and sorrel and parsley and other, all of our herbs are right around the edge of this thing. So it'll be nice to get them uncovered and, and get them uh, remulched and kind of freshened up and not have things laying on them uh, for a few months. We'll finish up this tour video on spider's web fatsia. This is another video we shot for the Garden Plants with Jim Putnam channel. It'll be up in the next uh, week or two. 
Uh, this is a variegated fatsia. We've got it in a kind of a protected space. These are, these are like really hardy in zone eight to 10. Um, so here in 7B, or if you were in 7A, you definitely want to put them up in a sheltered space. And so the winter wind won't be on it, but it has this, these alien-like clusters of white flowers that all kinds of pollinators. We were filming this video and there were honeybees, native bees, uh, ants, uh, flies, a uh, little non-stinging wasp <laughs> were all on this thing yesterday. So all kinds of things come to it. Uh, and again, it's one of those things that blooms at an odd time of year uh, in the late fall. And then it has this beautiful variegated large palmate foliage that's on it year round. So there you go. This is a uh, spider's web fatsia. Uh, thank you guys for following along with the channel and uh, don't forget to subscribe for upcoming content. We shot that whole video and then missed maybe the most beautiful flowering plant in the garden right now, which is this early wonder camellia that has 10, 12 open flowers on it. This is a camellia japonica that actually blooms in the fall instead of blooming after the first of the year. And it was just absolutely perfect double pink flowers.